This is my review of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Okay, so in this episode, we actually learn a little bit of backstory about how stands are developed when they somebody isn't born with them. And sure enough, we find out the guy responsible for that phenomenon in this episode. We actually get to meet him. So this episode, so this episode starts off with a flashback. Um, jo so jo Jotaro is, re is reporting back to his grandfather about the information he's learned, but also remarks that he can't actually go back. To go back home yet because he's still got some work he needs to take care of first and also ask them to fax him another picture that um apparently joseph used his hermit purple to take a spirit photo of or the very least one that they found so sure enough so sure enough jo so sure enough um joseph does that and while he's doing that um jotaro actually remarks about something that happened shortly after they defeated angelo so so shortly after um, Jotaro and Josuke defeated Angelo, Angelo begins to go into his backstory about how he actually acquired a stand, and sure enough starts the conversation by remarking that the that the guy in the school uniform who gave him the stand wouldn't be happy, and then proceeds to go into his backstory about how he actually acquired a stand. So, according to Angelo, he was sitting alone in his cell when suddenly a man just appeared in his in his cell with him and proceeded to shoot him with a bow and arrow before he could scream and call out for help. And sure enough, after and sure enough after being pierced in the mouth by the by the arrow, he actually developed the stand. And sure enough, the man the man in the uniform remarks remarks that it's a, that it's impressive that he actually developed the stand and that it means that he has the potential to become a stand user and and sure enough explains that him, that it was Dio himself who coined the term. So at which point at which point Jotaro immediately reacts because he knows what D he knows who Dio is, Josuke doesn't, but he knows exactly who Dio is. Um, but unfortunately before um Jotaro can actually get any more information out of Angelo, he uses his stand while still that's still trapped in the rubber glove, might I add, to, to try and take a kid hostage, and Josuke immediately defuses the situation by permanently fusing um um Angelo with the rock permanently basically turning it into a deformed rock that looks almost like Angelo's face. So so with that so with that Angelo is defeated, but but um Jotaro is a little bit upset at Josuke because as he points out, he knows who D he knows who Dio is and even explains that much to Josuke, explaining that Dio is a man that they've been fighting for centuries and that and that the Joestar group and that the Joestars over the years have actually fought him and his minions countless times. And that if there's somebody, and that if there's somebody in town that, with the ability to gift people stands, similar to how Dio obtained the world, then it's very, then it's entirely possible that something very, very wrong is going on, and they need to, and they should have grilled him for more information because they need to find that stand user, that stand user and his bow and arrow immediately, or it'll spell disaster. So, and sure, and sure enough, it's he shows a picture. And sure enough, it flashes back and points, and he points out that he needs to find this, the person with the bow and arrow quickly because Enya originally had it and somehow she she no longer has it anymore. So there's a very good possibility that whoever and that whoever Enya gave it to is somewhere in Morio. So yeah, so with, so yeah, with that, Josuke Josuke um actually goes to check up on Keiji, who has been actually been co conducting his own little research into all the disappearances of people. Apparently, 81 people have gone missing in Morio, and that's a, a highly unusual number for a, for a relatively peaceful town. So, and he remarks that it can most likely has something to do with whatever Jotaro said is going on. So, but unfortunately he doesn't get time to fully grasp that before, um, jo before Josuke shows up and the, the two head home from school. So, and at which point they pass by what is presumably an abandoned house, although, although Ke Keiichi sees somebody in the window upstairs, and is immediately concerned and tries to poke his head into the property. Um, so Kaito immediately, so Kaito immediately, look, I call him Keiichi, but Kaito immediately goes into, go tries to poke his head through the gate to try and figure out who exactly lives there, with even try, almost scaring Josuke unintentionally by m remarking that maybe it was a ghost. And Josuke is very concerned because he basically lives next door to his house. His house is only like a block or so, is only like a few houses away. So he, so he lives relatively nearby and is generally concerned 
that Kaito has found something that he's not supposed to find. And sure enough, he did! Um, and he's immediately attacked by a kid named Oka Kayashu Nijimura, who immediately traps um, Kaito's head in the, in the fence and tells them to get off their property because he lives there. So he's a little bit upset about the fact that somebody is poking their head where they shouldn't. Um, and while they're, and meanwhile, while they're dealing with that, um, Totoro actually decides to pay Tomoko a visit at her, at their house because he's looking for Josuke. And in a very hilarious scene, um, Tomoko accidentally conf confuses jo Totoro for his grandfather and immediately pulls him into an embrace and, and begins professing her undying love for him, even though he's not jo Joseph. So, and sure enough, sure enough, Jojo immediately diffuses the situation by explaining that he's not Joseph and asks where um, Josuke is, and when Tomoko is unable to answer that question, he decides to leave. But not before telling Tomoko that if about that he has his that she has his condolences for what happened to her father, and remarks that if Joseph were, were there, he would protect them to the best of his ability. But since he's old, he can't. And sure enough, gets back into his car and begins and begins state mulling other things over about how there's a about how Enya had, had a bow and arrow and she lost it after she died. Which me and we already know that's it's in Morio since since Angelo kind of mentioned it himself, and also we get to see what actually happens. And, and sure enough, Jojo remarks that he needs to stop this person with the bow and arrow re, before they create someone more dangerous than Dio with a, something more powerful than the world. And sure enough, that's his, that's what he resolves to do by the end of the episode. Um. Meanwhile, Orikayasu is giving um Josuke and Koichi a hard time, pointing out that they shouldn't be trespassing on people's house. And sure enough. And sure enough, calls him calls him out for calling him basically a dipshit. He basically, he basically they basically have a bit of a back and forth before, out of nowhere, Okayasu's brother actually shoots Koichi in the neck, and be, and because he doesn't have the potential to become a stand user, he starts to die. So and sure enough, and sure enough, Josuke becomes very concerned for his friend, and but is stopped by Okayasu, and and his brother. Because his brother reveals that um, Josuke is actually a stand user, and sure enough, Oke also reveals that he and his brother are also both stand users, and summons his own stand, the hand, which is which is later revealed to actually be quite literal. So, so Josuke initially doesn't know what the hand actually does. He starts fight he starts fighting with um with Okeyasu in his stand, um but is unable but is unable to actually land a hit on him. The two are able the two go to blows, but be, because of how because he's very wary of um, Orkiasu's right hand, specifically because of what its power is later revealed to be, he ha he holds a he holds the stand off as best he can, um, and sure enough, and sure enough, socks him in the jaw to try and get get some distance on him. Um, at which point, the two brothers have a bit of a conversation with with his with um, Orkiasu's brother, remarking remarking that he needs to be, take it a bit more seriously because his hand his stand is apparently very dangerous and. Okiyasu is kind of just monkeying around with it, so he needs to be a lot more careful. And sure, and but sure enough, while the two are talking, um, Josuke tries to attend to Koichi's wounds and try to heal him, which doesn't work as well as as expected because Okiyasu immediately retaliates by by jump by lunging at him, Josuke, and attacking the fence post and st the fence instead, which because of Okiyasu's power actually re re removes part of it. And Josuke eventually figures out what the stand actually does, and sure enough, Okiyasu confirms it. What the what the hand actually does is it erases space between between that any any space that's basically wiped swiped away by the hand's right hand is erased, and that that responds to whether it's physical to whether it's solid or liquid or gas. Basically, basically, if there's a solid or a liquid in the way, it'll be removed. If there's gas, if there's a if there's a gas in the way, say air, it'll remove it'll remove that as well and close any and any empty space will close will be closed as well. So, and sure enough, and sure enough, Okiyasu demonstrates his power by repeatedly erasing the air in between him and Josuke and repeatedly beating the shit out of him. And but eventually, Josuke gets smart and stands in front of a and stands in front of a bunch of flower pots, which, due to the hand's power, eventually fly into him and and knock Okiyasu unconscious. And while and while um, but while Josuke is busying himself with Orkeyasu, his brother actually draws drags Koichi inside, and we see his face, but never actually get a name. So, yeah, so yeah, Josuke, so yeah, it's, it becomes quickly apparent that Josuke is facing off against the guy who has created Angelos and gave him gave him his stand and made him a stand user, 
and also apparently st said arrow said bow and arrow is responsible for giving Dio his powers. So, well, his stand powers, his vampire powers he had since part one, but his stand he, he he the bow and arrow is responsible for giving Dio his stand powers, and so it's very dangerous. And sure enough, and sure enough, um, Jessica has to deal with this guy before he becomes a threat because if he accidentally shoots somebody that winds up having a much more dangerous mindset than Dio and gains a much more powerful stand than the world, it's game over. Because the world is far and away one of the more powerful stands in the series. Dio was pretty tough and it was only because of Jotaro's connection with the world that he was able to actually defeat it. Um, if there is no, if there's so, if there's no established connection between the new guy, the new super, the new super villain that they're going to wind up creating by accident and one of this, and the current Jojo of the part, then there's kind of a very little they can do about it. They're, over, they're going to have to figure out a way to actually defeat the stand by themselves, and that can be very terrifying if it winds up being way more powerful than it should be. So, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting because now they're facing off against... because now they have to retrieve that bow and arrow at all costs, or it could create something far more dangerous. Um, and sure and sure enough, that's exactly what Jojo remarks that they need to do. So, yeah, overall this episode is just it establishes how stand how stands are created, basically. If you don't have a stand if you don't have a stand at birth, then it explains where the stand where this bow and arrow actually comes into play. Because it was how Dio acquired his stand, and sure enough, if it if left to its own devices, it will eventually create a stand user more dangerous than Dio. So, yeah, that's going to be a very very big recurring plot point throughout this this season, I'm sure. I'm looking forward to seeing how they actually carry carry it through, but it sounds like it's going to be very dangerous. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it actually plays out. But in any case, yeah, that's my review of George Bush's Bizarre Adventure. What did you guys think? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below, or over on my Discord server, link in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter in the description below. And also, Check out my Patreon in the description below as well. It's only a couple bucks a month. It really helps me out. And you guys get access to a bunch of cool perks on my way saying thanks. So be sure to check those out in the description below as well. But in any case, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.